So if you love me, I wrote the first draft of the song with Dave Hall, um, this producer who was very um, influential in my journey. He really like was somebody who heard my demos. You know, at the time he was a very in demand record producer who had produced Mary J. Blige. You know, what's half of the what's the four one one album? Dream Lover for Mariah. You know, he was hot, 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 and had artists begging on his door every day to write songs for them and produce. So he needed songwriters in his camp. And I met him um, through a woman named Cheryl Butler, who worked at Untouchables, who I met her at a fluke through somebody else. But one person made me meet, you know, through another who introduced us and we hit it off very well. And um, we started just writing songs together, not particularly for anybody in particular, you know, we just started writing songs. He'd have tracks, tell me what you hear. There sometimes he'd have assignments on decks, like I need songs for Jade. And I believe If You Love Me, if I recall was a song that I think we were pitching to Jade, but they didn't end up taking it. I think that's what happened. However, um, you know, he sent the demo we did, cause I sang the demo, cause I'm a singer. So I sang the demo and I didn't really envision it as male or female, or certainly not at this sort of women's anthem um the girls did their own demo of it in california and switched a few of the words around because i th i had written if you love me show it and for me it was show it do it say it prove it because the verse said actions speak louder than words nikki she flipped the words of the course she said if you love me say it i remember when i first met her, i said well why did you put the say it first she said because women need to hear it you know what i mean you know i said i said that's interesting because sometimes as men we feel like we we want to show it more than have to say it like you know what i mean like and she said well you know women want to hear it you know so and then nikki added the part the oh ah, oh ah. she added that bridge part of the song and then they did their own demo and when i heard their demo i was like oh this is weird because it sounded like the vocal sounded so big it sounded like they were screaming i was like why are they screaming you know what i mean like it just was strange sounding to me. Like it wasn't bad. It was just, it became so big sounding that I was like, ooh, different vibe. But, you know, sure enough, history, as history would have it, people loved, they loved the, I think they loved very much the intimacy of the verse, the way the verse starts um, very vulnerably. But then they love by the time the chorus comes and those vocals, those that thick stack of vocals that they triple, they would sing a one mic and triple and double and then triple their voices. They loved the way the, that big voice, you know, those big female voices came in like, you know, really demanding love, you know? Um, and it's it became a, a instantly a hit song, you know, just the way radio played it. It was the number one R&B air played record in 1994, actually. Number one of all the R&B songs. And was nominated for you know a Grammy. Um, was won both in the ASCAP and the R&B category and the pop category. And then years later, Tory Lane sampled it, and it became an, a bit even bigger hit record called "Say It," which was actually bigger actually than "If You Love Me" because "Say It" by it being on the sort of crossover rhythm charts, it ended up playing on many more kinds of radio stations than "If You Love Me" did. And you know, it was Future and Metro sampled it again. You know. On their latest album, you know, um, they made a, a new song to it. You know, I like good girls, but I love bad. Mm, it's like I'm, you know, that's what they said. You know, that's what you never know how another song is going to inspire another song. So, you know, thirty years late, later, like I said, this is my thirtieth anniversary of being a published songwriter. The song just lives on and on, and different people, you know, still find their way to it. You know, and all kinds of people. You know, it gets used and requested, you know, and, and placed in films and commercials and all kinds of different usages over the years. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, like you say, they they vocal their vocals was, I don't know if it's the right word, but they were strong, you know, but they strong. sounded good though. You know what I'm saying? Strong and tight. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, a lot of people can sing loud, but they were strong vocals, but they were also tight and crystal clear and and, and tight, you know, you know. Yeah.